Are you new to voice acting online? Or maybe you're still just considering it and haven't gotten started yet. I'm Rebecca Amber Clark, and these are 10 audition mistakes new voice actors should avoid. Number 10. Being too afraid to audition in the first place. It's good to go into an audition as prepared as you can be, but don't let fear freeze you to the spot so you never actually get started in voice acting. Even if you totally mess up your audition, you can still learn from the experience what to improve for next time, which is something you can't do if you don't audition to begin with. And you never know, you might be exactly the voice actor the director is looking for, even if it's your first audition ever. Number 9. Rushing and submitting multiple times because you were rushing. If I had a cookie for every time I've seen a voice actor comment on a message forum to say they're going to resubmit an audition because they didn't like the version they submitted a few days or a couple weeks ago, I could open a bakery. It's true that sometimes you might just want to see if the director will let you do an audition over again if you really aren't happy with it after thinking it over for a bit. But the vast majority of the time, I personally think it's better to let your original audition stand. Going along with that, make sure you take the time to do an audition you're satisfied with BEFORE you send it in the first time. Measure twice, cut once applies to auditions just as much as it does to carpentry. If the casting call you're trying out for has a long window of opportunity before the deadline for submitting auditions, then record your audition, save it in your computer without submitting it, and listen to it again after a day or two. Then, only once you're sure you've got an audition you're happy with, send it in. Number 8. Not reading or following directions. Yeah. Casting directors put a list of requirements and audition directions into their casting calls for a reason. If a casting director asks you to send them a recording of you voice acting their sample audition lines, it's safe to say they do not want to hear your impression of a famous cartoon character that has nothing to do with their project instead. Directions can vary from casting call to casting call, but some key things to watch for include what file type to use, what lines to read for the audition, and any keywords or phrases that you need to include in the subject line of your email so the director can find all the auditions in their inbox. Also, unless the casting director says otherwise, you should go on the assumption that they want to hear you record all of their audition lines. Don't just pick one or two to do and ignore the rest. Sending in a complete audition that follows all the casting call guidelines makes you look more professional and shows you'll be able to follow directions when it comes time to do the full script if you're cast for the role. Number 7. Not emoting strongly enough. Here's a little bonus voice acting exercise. Pick a line from a movie or a book and record it in a normal speaking voice. Then record it again, but with a little more emotion. Record it a third time, but with a little more emotion than that. Keep going 10, 20, or 30 or more times until you think you just can't put any more emotion into that line. Then go back and listen to your recording. You might just be surprised how many takes you listen to before you get to the first one that doesn't sound flat. Just feeling connected to a role or to an emotion isn't the same thing as being able to express it with your voice. It's just like how being a fan of classical music isn't the same as knowing how to actually play the piano. It's really common among new voice actors to record a line that they feel strongly connected to, only to play it back and have it sound monotone. We're called voice actors, not emotion feelers. So when you read for a line, Make sure the emotion can be heard in your voice, not just felt in your heart. Make it sound like what you're trying to get across, so the listener can feel the emotion too. Think of your favorite cartoon character, and imagine how they sound. Most likely, even if they're a very quiet and somber character, the sound of their voice is still somehow full of meaning when you hear it, and you can thank the voice actor for that. 
Even many robotic or AI characters, such as GLaDOS from the Portal games, HAL from 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Lieutenant Commander Data from Star Trek will still use a lot of inflection in their vocal delivery. I strongly recommend studying those performances, among others. Number 6. The Whisper Yell! If you're going to yell for an audition or a role, then yell! If for any reason you can't yell, like you haven't been trained how to do it safely yet, or you live in an apartment and don't want to disturb the neighbors, then find another way to express the forcefulness of the line without yelling. In some cases where yelling or screaming is flat out required, you may even have to pass up certain roles altogether. But that sort of half yell, half whisper that people do when they want to yell, but they're afraid to be loud, will not sound like yelling at all. It'll sound like exactly what it is, someone who's afraid to be too loud. And the end result? Just isn't that great. Far, far more importantly though, yelling like that puts an unnatural strain on your voice. And if you don't know what you're doing, you could risk serious, possibly permanent damage. But if you do take good care of your voice, then you should be able to voice act for years to come. There will still be loud roles out there for you when you are in a position to do some real yelling and screaming. Number five, not editing sound files. If you read partway through a line only to stumble over an awkward word or phrase, it's absolutely correct to go back to the beginning of the line and try again but it's also important to remember to cut out the failed first try from your audition file before sending it in. The same thing goes for recording lots of takes of a line. Remember to go back and cut out all but the best takes. Although doing more than one take is generally a good idea, not all directors have the time or patience to listen to 10 or 20 takes of the same line from the same person especially if the takes all sound really similar, or the director has a lot of other auditions to listen to. So it's best to delete all but your best, and most varied, two or three takes at most. If you cough, sneeze, bump against the microphone, or have a lot of mouse-clicking sounds as you scroll through your script, you should delete those as well. You'll be left with a much more seamless and professional-sounding audition file. Number four, self-deprecation. Apologizing to the director for your lack of ability doesn't come across as modest. It just comes across as unprofessional and as a lack of confidence. Worst case scenario, directors will be annoyed and wonder if you already knew you were a bad fit, why you wasted their time at all. Best case scenario, a director will feel sorry for you and point out your mistake so you don't repeat it with a less understanding person. Imposter syndrome is real, and it can hit anyone, no matter how experienced, skilled, and talented they may be. So don't worry that you're somehow tricking a director into thinking you're worth more than you are. Just let your audition skills speak for themselves, and let the director decide if your audition meets their standards or not. Have faith in yourself. As long as you're doing your best, you never have anything to apologize for, I promise. Number three, nagging for feedback or casting results. Sending multiple emails demanding to know if you've been cast yet doesn't improve your chances of getting a role, it just gets on a director's nerves or makes them uncomfortable. Believe me, the directors who are going to respond to everyone and tell you whether or not you were cast will do so without you nagging to hear back from them. And directors who don't have the time to send out personalized messages to everyone to let you know who got the roles also don't have the time to answer all those emails from you. Depending on the director or studio, they may even blacklist you from future auditions they hold. Waiting to hear back on an audition can be very, very hard, especially if you're just starting out and you're not used to all the stress, and yes, rejection, that often goes with auditioning. But for your own sake, as well as the director's, it's best to just audition, try as hard as you can to forget about it, and move to the next audition. 
If and when you hear back from a director, you'll find out if you got the role. If you never do hear back, then it means you didn't get it. Just keep at it. Don't stress out wondering about specific roles you tried out for, and just enjoy the roles you are cast for. The same thing goes for asking a director for feedback on how you did. Some directors are happy to give feedback if asked for it. Some don't have the time or just aren't interested. Some are uncomfortable giving feedback because they don't want to risk hurting your feelings. And no, insisting that they can't hurt your feelings doesn't help. It's totally fine to ask once and nicely. I, for one, don't like to give feedback without being asked to, since not all voice actors want it. But don't keep asking for feedback if they don't answer or say no. If you need feedback on your voice acting, try asking your fellow voice actors on Twitter, Discord, or a voice acting forum. A lot of the time, at least one or two people will be willing to tell you what they think of your audition clip. Number two, complaining about the casting results. Never do this. You think I made an unfair decision? Oh, you're right, I'm so sorry, you can have the role, said no director ever. Once a casting director has made their decision, that's it. Going on a social media rant or sulking on a message board about what that decision is will not only do you absolutely no good, it will very likely do your future chances a lot of harm. Nobody likes a bad sport, and regardless of whether the casting decision really was unfair or not, complaining just makes you, and not the director, look bad. Try to remember that no one voice actor is ever owed a role. I see this most often when a director holds a public casting call and then casts one or more roles to themselves, their family members, or their friends. From the outside, that often looks really unfair, but you probably don't know the whole story. Maybe the director made whoever they ended up casting audition alongside everyone else, and they really were the best fit. If you think it's unfair for a director to cast someone just because they're friends with them, then isn't it also unfair if they don't even let their friends try for a role just because they are friends? Now, let me be clear. I'm not saying that casting decisions are always fair. Sometimes the director really was being a jerk about it. But pull back and think a second. If that's true, do you really think it would have been a good experience working on a project with a director who's a jerk? Sometimes the old sayings really do give you the best advice. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Just congratulate the cast or keep silent and move on to the next opportunity with your head held high. Number one, giving up. The number one mistake I see new voice actors make when it comes to auditioning is giving up. New voice actors don't have a lot of experience acting or in being rejected for voice roles. The combination means that you're likely to be turned down often, and it may hurt a lot. It can be so discouraging for many new voice actors that they just give up on voice acting altogether. And for some people, that's fine. Voice acting, or any type of performance art, just isn't an enjoyable lifestyle for everyone. Just make sure that you don't cheat yourself out of something great because of a few early setbacks. Babies crawl before they can walk, and when they do start walking, they fall. A lot. If babies gave up walking because they fell so much, we'd all spend our whole lives crawling around on all fours. Even experienced voice actors are, usually, turned down for way more roles than they are cast for. But if you stick it out, it's totally worth it. At least, I think it is. So, to quote a song sung by Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start all over again. And that was 10 audition mistakes for new voice actors to avoid. But this was just my list, and it doesn't come close to covering the whole topic. But what do you think? Have you done any of the things on this list? How did it work out for you? Got some what-not-to-do advice that didn't make it into this video? Share in the comments! Let's all learn from each other! 
because that's what makes the voice acting community so strong. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the rest of my channel for more voice acting videos. And if you like what you find, consider subscribing. On that note, if you liked this video and want to see more like it, please leave a like or a comment so I know.